Hi, I'm Dr. B, and today I'm going to discuss the effects of benzodiazepines on your mind and your body, how long they last, and their long-term effects. I hope you join me in my mission of changing the perception of addiction. You can do that easily by clicking the subscribe and notification bell. If you personally need help, please don't hesitate to call me, 1-800-779-4715. Okay, I'm gonna try and answer some of these questions that I got about benzodiazepines. And the first one I'm gonna try to answer here is, uh, what are the effects of benzodiazepines on the brain and the body when prescribed correctly? And that really changes the answer uh, because when prescribed correctly versus when it's abused. Uh, first, I'd like to say some of the physical uh, uh, characteristics of benzodiazepines. They're sort of what's called uh, inhibitory drugs where they affect the inhibitory system and the central nervous system versus stimulation, let's say cocaine or methamphetamines or any kind of stimulation drug. So just think of it backwards. So what do they do? Uh, you know, any kind of thing that you think about in terms of inhibition, let's go through some of the effects that they have when prescribed correctly. Let me talk about one of the effects that even if they're prescribed correctly they have is you have difficulty with motor system and coordination. No matter what dose you're prescribed, there will be a change. And that's sort of borne out from the literature when we look at driving with this medication on. Uh, there is an effect on how you drive, even at the normal low doses. Let's go to the next thing. Let's talk about how they use it in the operating room. The anesthesiologist uses this before operation for sedation. And they also use it for what's called anterograde amnesia. Uh, which is they make you forget everything from the time the drug was administered to the end of the operation. And that's a good thing in that case, right? You don't really want to rem remember something as traumatic as an operation. That's one of the effects on your brain and your body when prescribed correctly. Uh, so uh, keep in mind, that's an interesting effect that it has when prescribed correctly because that particular effect, your amnesia, forgetting from when you took the medication forward in time, is not a desirable effect for all of the other indications that I'm going to discuss. Other indications or other uh, effects on your brain and body, it's sedating. So you use it for generalized anxiety disorders, panic disorders. Uh, they even use it as a uh, adjunct with uh, uh, antidepressant medication for obsessive compulsive disorders. They also use it in situations like bipolar disorder where a person has mania. You know, you're very hyperactive. Your nervous system is very hyperactive. They may use it for schizophrenia. Again, at times when you're hallucinating, your nervous system is very hyperactive. So uh, anxiety, panic disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, all of these sort of dampen the nervous system. Other uses and other effects is it affects the muscles, okay? It's a muscle relaxant. It's a very powerful muscle relaxant. And for certain chronic diseases or after an injury, this really helps with pain because you relax the muscle all of the neurons that fire, that make that muscle work really hard are sort of subdued and dampened and it may help with pain. It's also an antispasmatic, right? What does that mean? Okay, when you have a spinal cord injury or some of the upper motor neuron diseases like multiple sclerosis, these patients have a lot of spasticity and spasticity has about 50 different uh, signs and symptoms, but Essentially, your uh, joints are just kind of, they don't have what's called a reflex inhibitory arch working properly, and it's very painful. So it decreases that spasticity tone. Remember, inhibition. They're also used for seizures, right? And so the effect is to either you can use it to prevent seizures or stop a seizure while it's happening, and that's used in the emergency department or in a hospital 
for an active seizure. So it has a wide range of clinical effects and if used properly, and it can be very, very beneficial in those ways. Uh, from top to bottom, as I said, uh, motor coordination, that's an undesirable effect. Uh, you could be, and that could be in the way you walk, the way you talk with slurred speech, the way you drive in the operating room. It has an effect on sedation. It calms you down right before the surgery. It also makes you forget the surgery, amnesia. Otherwise, a lot of anxiety disorders and obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, otherwise, uh, another one I didn't mention is it helps you go to sleep, right? It's a hypnotic. So if used properly at the right dose, it can have that kind of wide ranging clinical effect. Uh, let me move on to the next question. And it asks, how long do the effects of benzodiazepines last? So <clears throat> I'm going to kind of interpret that question in the short and medium term versus long-term consequences. And that's if, if someone is taking it regularly at the doses prescribed. Now, this is an interesting question because it really, number one, depends on the person and their age, how well their kidneys are working, how well their liver is working, how well their lungs are working, believe it or not. So that's one thing to keep in mind. How are those things modulated or controlled? Well, it depends if you have any liver disease, any kidney function disease, and your age, because as you age, physiology slows down. The liver slows down. The kidney slows down. Other than that, the different kinds of benzodiazepines, some of the more popular ones are Xanax, Ativan, Valium, uh, Temazepam. We see those in use a lot. It really depends because each one of those has a different potency, how strong they are, how quickly the onset of action occurs, how quickly they get in your stream, bloodstream and in your brain. Uh, also, uh, what are the uh, pharmacokinetics and di uh, pharmacodynamics? How quickly you get rid of it? It also has to do with uh, how lipid soluble this drug is. So, you know, in the short term, I would say anywhere from a few hours to even a few days, depending if you've been taking it chronically for some time, and it has a stacking effect because it's lipid soluble. It gets stored in your fat tissue. So someone's been taking it for a few days versus someone taking it a few months or years, it's gonna be very different to answer the question how long the effects last. It could be anything from a few hours if you just took it once uh, to several days and weeks that it stores up in your system. Uh, and that's, again, uh, I'm assuming you're taking it correctly and not necessarily abusing it. When abused, what are the effects? Uh, so when abused, I'm gonna assume that question means if you're taking it for recreation and most of the time, these uh, people are taking it above the normal dose. Uh, so if you take it high enough, one of the things that I said is, you know, respiratory depression can happen, but also there are some other effects we don't talk about. All of the effects I just described, you're going to have those effects, except you're going to stereotype it. But also, uh, you know, you might see somebody walking with slurred speech, walking as if they're drunk, but there's other effects that they have. You might see someone become hyper uh, aggressive, they're, you're going to see a lowering of inhibitions. And I like to always kind of make the analogy of someone taking a couple of shots of liquor and they, because it's the same type of medication and it hits the same places in the nervous system. So think of it like this. Someone can have a few glasses, a glass of wine, a couple of glasses of wine, but if they have a shot of alcohol or a couple of shots of tequila, they, their inhibitions go down. So what are the effects? They might sometimes do things they wouldn't normally do. Uh, for example, they might get into risky situations. They might get into dangerous situations in terms of sexual practices. Uh, they might become hyper aggressive and get into fights. And, and then they don't remember anything some of the time. 
So these are some of the effects if you're taking doses outside of the prescribed dose. The next question is, what are the long-term effects of using benzodiazepines? This question can sort of be broken down into two things. What are the long-term effects if you're using it and constantly have that stacking effect? And then the other part of this question is, you know, what are the long-term effects, even if you cease using it after so many years, or uh, as sort of a secondary effect? The primary effect, the primary thing that I will talk about long-term effect is, again, it has a stacking up effect because your fat cells in your body store this medication. And so what happens is if you're storing it in your fat tissue, you're constantly, slowly releasing this medication. So if there's amnesia, forgetfulness issues, it's always gonna be there. If it's sedation issues, which you actually build a tolerance to, you're gonna need more and more, so that one is not necessarily the case. But everything else, cognition, uh, 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 amnesia, uh, motor coordination, uh, slurred speech kind of thing, if there is any, given whatever dose you're taking, all of these effects stack up because it's stored in your fat system. Now, there are some other things that is of controversy in the medical literature. Does this medication in its long-term use uh, uh, lead to uh, eventual cognitive deficit or otherwise known as Alzheimer's disease, okay? And that is a topic of controversy still. Different studies have shown different things. Uh, most recently, in the last couple of years, a European study showed that it does not. But that's still quite debatable, whether it leads to long-term effect for sort, sort of a dementia-like symptom or disease process, whether these make the risk more likely or not. Otherwise, the long-term use is simply the stacking up effect of this medication because it's stored in your fat tissues. I hope this answers some of your questions regarding the effects of benzodiazepines on the body and the brain. If you're interested in learning more about benzodiazepines, please click the video above and I'll see you there.